Hi, I'm Bunny Bennett, and I play Rabbit in the band Steam Powered Giraffe. Um, it's a musical robot pantomime rock show, and I do uh, the character Rabbit, and I also do some puppetry, and I write songs, and I do a lot of our graphic design work and illustration. Hey guys, I'm Kat, and this is my friend Libby. Hi. We're joined today by Bunny, who plays the character of Rabbit in the band Steam Power Giraffe. So if you guys haven't heard of Steam Power Giraffe, go check them out. They're a really awesome band. Kind of got a steampunk aesthetic, really awesome music. So if you haven't heard of them, make sure you check them out. I'll put their link to their website up. So welcome, Bunny. Thank you for joining me today. Hi there. It's good, uh, good to be here. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, you are transgender. You identify as female. Have you always known that you were transgender, or was it something that you kind of felt was off and then realized what it was? Well, um, I guess when you're a kid, you don't really understand. Uh, I, I think it's more more innocent. Uh, and you start uh, growing up and realizing the restraints that society is going to put on you, and then you kind of you kind of get in your mind that I should probably never ever talk about this. Ever again, I should just try to conform as a normal person. So was it like you kind of did know that something was up, but you just didn't want to talk about it and you didn't really want to address it? Y yeah. Uh, I was naive. I was a kid. I didn't really know what to make of it. I just thought, I am a perverted, sick person, and I should probably just keep this to myself. As I got older, though, it it you know it was such a big part of me that it, it started to come out... Uh, not not in positive ways, but eventually I just you know kind of outed myself, just so I could stop living, you know, living in the shadows with it because it's such a big part of who I am. Did you give yourself a, a hard time, like coming to terms with yourself? Yeah, uh, I don't think it ever stops. Uh, it's still a huge challenge. So um, I I think I think you never really you never really can get comfortable. In your skin, when you're transgendered, um, no matter what you do, uh, you will always be an exception. You're not genetically born the, the sex you hope to see yourself as. So you're, you're going to be unique, and uh, I think that's a good, a good point for, for all uh, up-and-coming transgendered individuals, is that uh, you're going to be unique for the rest of your life, <laughs> uh, no matter what you do. As well as being transgendered, you also identify as a lesbian. Um, because this, did you have to come out twice, or was it like, oh, also I still like? No. Uh, well, <laughs> I think a lot of people when I first said when I first came out, you know, they imagined me wearing Southern Belle dresses and fanning myself, and and oh my gosh, all the boys. But I, I am not, I'm not gay in terms of uh, seeing myself as a man. I'm still attracted to women, and so yes, if you're looking at me as a woman. Uh, I would be gay because I like women. <laughs> so yeah. So not, I don't like men. So, but I think that was an expectation, uh, the stereotype that you know only effeminate men uh, would be transgender. That having any sort of mass masculinity uh, goes against the stereotype and the grain, mm -hmm. which is just not the case. <laughs> yeah. There are some manly men who who are transgender. Women are predominantly the the predominant gender in your life then. Do you, do you feel like you have to conform to society's preconceived notions of what a woman is? Well, I think that, that kind of clockwork goes on in your brain uh, from time to time. I mean, I don't think we're always conscious of it, but I think there is sort of a, a, sort of a, a blockade or a, a programming that we want to adhere to what society wants to view us as. So living in between... Uh, you know, let's say I was, I was, I was, you know, I had the the boobs and the dress and everything, but I was completely, the wig was gone, I was just bald, you know, that would be a little, a little intense for a lot of people. Living in the gray area is really scary, so going to one or the other does seem like a better option for most people. Uh, I don't really agree with that. <laughs> it's not always the best option, but I think we feel, I think I feel that I need to be one or the other right now. Uh, it's not only for myself, but just because it's much easier to present as one or the other rather than showing the gray area that is pretty much my personal daily life, you know? Because it looks weird. It looks... You can't understand it. It's like, am I a boy? Am I a girl? 
Uh, I'm somewhere in between. And no one wants to see that. Do you use the kind of grey area? Because you were saying that it was it's kind of an area that people don't really understand. Is it super difficult for you to get across to people exactly who you are and how you identify yourself? Well, it is. I mean, it never really became important until Steam Powered Giraffe became a thing that people watched and liked. So, uh, But yes, there's a lot of misconstrued information. And because I haven't had a really concrete, like, interview or, or website that kind of details my, my my transgender nature and what you know what the facts are uh, everything I, I type out about this has just it just gets lost in the social stream so I recently formed a blog which is hopefully going to detail uh, you know a lot a lot more of my experiences so people don't have to try to guess you know who I actually am or you know they have a better perspective and, and you know a lot of the stereotypes that people are are, are putting me into can kind of be you know, tossed out the window, hopefully. When you were kind of coming to terms with and, and kind of considering actually coming out fully and saying, well, this is just who I am, might as well just go through with it, um, were there many people, like LGBT people, that you went to for advice or YouTubers, books? I wish there was. I really, it wasn't really until I, I after I kind of, you know pulled the plug and started falling down the drain, <laughs> that, that I kind of, uh, I realized that there was there were some personalities out there. But even even so, I, I don't think there's a lot of great role models or, or like, or, or I don't know, personalities that I've, I've really looked to for advice. So, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've definitely, you know, I've done my research in my 26 years. You know, there's a lot of resources online. Which helped me out immensely, uh, you know, when I was younger. But really, uh, it's it's been a pretty personal thing. I haven't become too involved in the transgender community for whatever reason. I just, I don't know. Just haven't felt like it was something you needed to do. I've. It just hasn't happened. I mean, uh, I guess I, I use internet primarily for work and art, and I just <laughs> using it as a social platform is just not something I've ever done, which is. You know, so uh, there's no transgendered individuals in my real life that I hang out with. So, uh, you know, it can feel pretty lonely. <laughs> Do you feel then um, that you need to be that kind of role model for people? Uh, well, I, I guess it's, I, I've, I've kind of been thrown into it. Um, it wasn't. I guess it's not really important that the fans of Steam Powered Giraffe know this about me, but it also. They don't need to know that Sam's a vegan or that we're against alcohol and drugs. And it just kind of feels like a, a little moment where we can say, "Hey, look, we're these. We 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 portray these characters that you love so much, and you know this is who we are as people." It's kind of informing the masses, so to speak, on issues that we really feel strongly about. So we've kind of gotten a little more vocal with LGBT rights and and you know veganism and you know a lot of the the uh, trendy hipster stuff that will be labeled as. <laughs> Just because we feel it's important that people should see these perspectives. Um, just on Steam Power Giraffe, because you were just talking about it, your character is Rabbit, who is male. Was it, when you were coming up with these characters, was it just something that just happened that you came up with Rabbit? Or was it a conscious decision to make Rabbit who he is? Uh, oh, rather than like being making him female? Yeah, yeah. Well, I can't remember exactly, but I think uh, Steam Powered Giraffe started out before I came out, maybe just a couple months. I'm not exactly sure, but it was obviously at that point in my life, I was not ready to, you know, to, to, to be a drag performer or anything like that, you know, like, uh, so it didn't even occur to me. I made a male because I am male, and that's what I could pull off. And I think even even today, to, uh, you know, for today, it, it's like I, I can't imagine changing his gender and, and having that go over well. I mean, I guess it's fun to think about, like, oh, that'd be cool, but it really wouldn't. It's like if 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 that if that ever happens, I'd have to create a whole new character, and then I have to ask myself, uh, is this really what the band is about? A vehicle for me to kind of, you know, express my gender identity, or is what it what it is, like, you know, good enough. It's like, does it really matter that he's a guy? I mean, 
in a way it does. Uh, you know, but I, he started off as a man, so it's like I don't want to. I, I don't really have a, a problem, uh, you know, not going up on stage and drag because uh, it's it's a job for me. Uh, I love it and I enjoy it. But he is a character, and I'm acting on stage. <laughs> I'm nothing like nothing like Rabbit's uh, eccentric weirdness. I don't. I don't think he's very he's very hyper, and so it's a character. So I'm I'm not really too attached. To kind of put my, you know, my bare bones up on stage in 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 regards to Steam Power Giraffe, maybe on other projects if it's a good 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 fit. I think lately you've also been including a lot of elements of yourself as a female into it, such as um, blue mat and mistress bunny, and you drew the, yeah. the image of the female rabbit with Paige a while ago. So I think you are kind of incorporating elements of yourself into it, just not into that main. Exactly. Well, I, th- I know the fans are aware, and they they you know they, they say a lot of stuff like, you know, oh, you should be a a woman in the act and stuff. You know, they they have good intentions, but it's just you know. So I want to kind of I do want to acknowledge you know that they they care, and I think the you know making it so I have an uh, another alter ego in in the form of uh, you know one of the Walter girls is is kind of fun. And you know, I I, I also. I'm the voice and puppeteer for Gigi the giraffe, and she's a girl too. So that's kind of, you know, it's not exactly, she's not like a sexy character or anything. But you know, I feel uh, it's a good vehicle for me to express a little bit of, of a, of a exaggerated, uh, feminine persona, you know, which is, which is fun. It's, it's cute, and a lot of kids like Gigi already. But then I guess if, if Steam Power Giraffe goes further um, than you expected, and you end up having a lasting career. Do you think there'll become a time where you'll just decide, okay, it's now time to become a full-time woman? I don't know. I can't really look into the future. I'm so young right now. Um, uh, you know, there's a lot of people that say tra- transitioning to one or the other is, is the only way. And there's some people that say that transitioning is not the answer. And I believe, uh, it, it, I, I think the gray area it really scares people. And it scares me, and that's why I need to kind of be one or the other most of the time. Uh, I think I, th- I think we need to be more comfortable living in the gray area, and that's where I have to live right now. I don't have the money to transition, even if I wanted to, and I'm totally not sure. And painful surgery is is that going to be the the golden ticket to happiness? No, it's not. Uh, if I transition, uh, you know, it might it might help some other other things, but. Uh, you know, a lot of these issues, you know, they 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 go directly into the brain, and you know, uh, transgenderism is is only one aspect of of of, uh, of a lot of the problems a human can have. <laughs> uh, not all my problems are caused by being transgendered, but uh, you know, just solving you know being born in the wrong body is not going to fix the the multitude of other emotional problems that a human might have. So uh, you know, if I do decide to transition, hopefully it's it's because I've I've weighed you know my existence, and I think I'm just too young to make that decision right now. Sure, there's people that that know right off the bat or seem to like they they have to be that other gender, but I'm just not one of them. Like I am in the gray area, and even if I did have a, a specific goal to become a woman, uh, I'm I'm in the gray area right now, and that's really what I'm focused on is. Is, is trying to be comfortable in my own skin, regardless of gender. You've kind of had a, a bit of a feel for kind of being out in in the in the public eye. Is it really difficult um, being out in public eye? Yes and no, I guess. Uh, it's you know being a quirky artist anyway. I'm I'm a, I'm a mime. I'm a robot. I, have, I do illustrations. I mean, it almost seems like the the whole transgendered cross-dressing stuff really just plays into that really well. It's a good image that I can just easily pick up and like, yeah, I'm already eccentric enough, so guess what? <laughs> I'm even more eccentric. So, you know, you can play it like that, and does it, you know, but you know, I, I think there's bigger issues with being, uh, you know, just in the public eye, uh, regardless of gender, that affect me. Um, cause honestly, most of the public is really supportive. You know, there's always people that, you know, have their own agendas, but, you know, most people are, are super, super supportive of, 
the whole transgender thing. So, so it hasn't been a big issue. Have your experiences changed views that you had when you were younger? Yeah, uh, you know, with, with age co comes wisdom. Um, you take the fear of, of kind of being found out and being considered this pervert and kind of realizing that I, I'm not, what I, what I, what this is, is totally not, not as creepy as some of the other shit that people do. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's very, it's very humble. It's like, it's very, it's like, I want to wear a dress. It's like, that's, that's the extent of it in the long run. I want to be allowed to wear a dress and not feel like I'm less of a man or, you know, that's what it comes down to. It's like, yeah, just wanting to express yourself. And, you know, that, that comes with, with, with age. And even though I'm still struggling with it, uh, I can kind of see the path I need to be on as, as terrifying as it is. What about um, parents and family? How are they, how are they feeling with this? Uh, I have a kind of a very basic relationship with my family. They weren't, you know, super abusive. They weren't super loving. They were just kind of in between. So uh, the averageness of how they raised me uh, uh, kind of plays into how they reacted when I when I said I came out as a cross stretcher to them first. I thought that would be easier, uh, and I don't even know if they actually know if I'm transgendered. But I, I admitted it to them, and you know they were. They, they were they were weirded out by it, but it didn't really change anything. Um, so it's it's a very there is a very average response. They're they're decently open-minded people, but um, you know they're they're kind of the everyman in my mind. <laughs> they don't they don't really care. They don't really understand it, but they just don't really care. <laughs> I've heard things um, speaking to other LGBT people that um, when they came out, they felt like they isolated themselves or alienated themselves from their straight friends. Did you feel that at all? Yeah. Uh, you know, there was, there was definitely a phase before I actually just said, you know what, I like to wear dresses. Before I said that, um, uh, there, was some, there was just some awkward times. You know, it's, it's kind of like all your friends wonder why. Why every Halloween are you dressing in drag? And... Like something weird's going on there, so uh, I definitely felt uh, I needed to kind of identify myself to these people because it was—I'm sure I just seemed really creepy. And you know, by coming at it, it's like, oh, okay, at least I can label you now. Um, but uh, not really. I mean, I'm kind of a—what uh, do you want? I, I don't want to say a recluse, but I—I kind of just. My friends are, are very, in a small number, and they're very good friends. So, uh, yes, it is true. I, 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 I did feel alienated while coming out, and uh, it, it's, a tough, it's a tough badge to wear. Nobody can really relate to you, and I'm sure I've lost some friends that I just don't know about because I don't care to keep up with them <laughs> or whatever. So, God, I really consider them friends, you know, but... Uh, yeah, I'm sure. It, I'm sure it has affected people that I just don't give a shit about. But I, I am not aware of it because uh, they didn't keep in touch. <laughs> you and David are very close, obviously. Um, I'm wondering how it was coming out to someone who plays such a large part in your life. I came out to David like maybe a year before I came out to any, to my parents, and then. You know, like two years after that, I came out to the, the world. Um, I just had to admit it to David because, you know, he was my brother, and I just said, you know, this is what I do, and if you don't like it, well, that's your problem. And he said, I don't care. And it's been that way ever since. So he just, you know, I think I, I'm blessed to have very open minded uh, family. Do you feel like there's more pressure on you being a trans lesbian? than just a person who was a cis lesbian? I, th I, think, I think so. Um, the, uh, even the transgender community, I, I haven't done a lot of, of, of video blogs or put myself out there so much that I get a, a lot of commentary, but the commentary I see kind of surrounding uh, the issues um, is that 
that a lot of people expect you that you have to be gay if you want to be a woman. Even uh, some transgender people. It's like, it's kind of, it's kind of upsetting because it's like, uh, there is no mold for transgenderism. You can't, just like someone's brain, some mental illness may not exactly be the same. Uh, not that I'm saying transgender is, is a mental illness. I'm just saying, like, people are different. And, you know, my transgender nature is going to be different than yours. I'm a different person. So you can't really group us all into one, one you know, little... little little box and say this these are this is, these are the rules <laughs> and you have to adhere to them so yeah I, I, there does seem to be like people like you, you must be gay you must have thought about penis sometime and it's like you know if I was gay that'd be fine I wouldn't care it's not a big gay is like not even taboo anymore who gives a shit <laughs> but like being transgender that's still pretty taboo so how is your patience with people like um, obviously you have to explain everything like how patient can you be? Are there times where you just snap and feel like, oh god, I've explained this so many times already? Yeah, well, that's that's why I started that blog, so I can just... A lot of people don't know what pronouns to refer to me as. Uh, you know, there's a lot of mis misconception, and it's not because I, I put the wrong information out there. I think it's just because I didn't say anything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I really don't care if people call me a man or a woman. I, I, I kind of feel like if they want to refer to me as she and her, it's kind of just, it's to be flattery. It's kind of like, we're on the internet, we're never going to meet. You know, it's like, this is just, this is kind of me just saying I support you. But, you know, if you want to call me a man, that's fine, because our relationship is audience and entertainer mostly. Uh, unless you're my personal friend. And even then, I don't, my, my, uh, my brother and the bandmates don't call me she and stuff. I don't expect them to, because unless I'm, like, living full time, that's just, like, what a... What a clusterfuck for them to have to try to remember. And I'm switching. Like, what, what if I wake up one morning and I'm just, you know, half naked? I'm not... <laughs> and I look like a man. Look, what, am I expecting them to call me a girl? It's like, no. I mean... I think I've... There was a point, there was a time early on when I came out that I wanted to be referred to as a woman. But this was before any of the sort of limelight hit me. And I quickly got over it because I just realize what an inconvenience it is for people. And I hate it too. It's like a lot of our fans are transgendered, uh, believe it or not, and and I never know what to call them because they're, they're still figuring themselves out. And you can, and mostly on the internet, everything is ambiguous anyways. You have an icon of my brother as your, as your Tumblr username, and your username sounds like a guy, but the content of your blog is, is a woman, and I don't, I really don't know what you are. So it really shouldn't matter. Have you had any strong experiences with homophobia or transphobia? Well, the internet is is great for that. Uh, you know, every once in a while on my YouTube video, I have I have like one, which I has like nineteen thousand hits or something. That's that's pretty cool for for nothing. <laughs> no one really knows about me. So that's every once in a while you get like you get like the 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 person who wants to start something or has their own agenda, but uh, really, no one in my personal life. It's all just been internet stuff. And can you really, can you really take the internet seriously? I mean, you know, I hopefully I try to inform. I've had a lot of great emails and messages about people who initially were shocked to learn uh, that I had any interest in living as a woman. And then as they got to know me, uh, they, they found a new appreciation uh, for transgendered individuals. And maybe it's because I'm doing something cool, you know, like with the robots and stuff. And it's like that I'm, that I can be, I'm a very grounded person. I, you know, I run a business. Uh, you know, I book shows and do all this, this stuff. And I'm still eccentric as hell, but, but hey, you know, normal people. Okay, I guess I'm not really normal. I am a mime, so that's... Well, anyways, uh, normal people can be transgender too. So it's it's not it doesn't mean that you're you want to make a woman suit or you know lo lower lotion down into a hole. It's it's uh it's not like Science of the Lambs, which is a great movie. I love it to death. But you know they even say in the movie that the murderer was 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 emulating uh, transgenderism. He was he was a psychopath. <laughs> But what about um, attitudes in San Diego itself? Like, do you ever walk down the street and just get yelled at? 
Well, uh, I try not to draw attention to myself too much anyway, so I dress very uh, incognito anyway. And it really has nothing to do with gender. It just, I don't want people to recognize me. Uh, and I get that a lot around here in San Diego. Not so much in my, my, my hometown, like the, you know, where I actually live, but as soon as I cross that boundary, uh, you know, I just don't want to get recognized. <laughs> so I, I kind of want to not draw attention to myself because, so I dress like you would, you wouldn't be able to spot me probably. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't dress in public very often. I do go to events and stuff in drag, but, uh, not that anyone is aware of that because, you know, once again, uh, a lot of a lot of transgender people don't want to be made a what do you like a what's the word I'm looking for? They don't want to be made a big deal. They don't want to stand out. They want to blend in. Whereas you know it's not like we want to be drag performers and stand out and be all like you know look at us. That's the opposite. That's the, that's that's just totally not what it's about. You know if I wanted to do that, which you know that's that sounds cool, uh, I would still keep it to the stage. You know. Uh, clothing doesn't necessarily make make the gender how I feel inside. It's not going to change, you know, those things. But I mean, it can help. But no, I don't. I don't really go out about in public to get harassed enough. But I, actually, I've I've walked down the street in in regular male garb, and it's it's and you still get harassed on the street <laughs> because you're a pedestrian. So you know, people will just shout obscenities at you, and that's. That is San Diego for you. So you're saying that you don't really feel like you need to make a big deal out of it and really go out there and dress and drag all the time. But do you, is there a part of you that gets slightly offended when people say things like, oh, you should keep that part of yourself to yourself? Um, it's not really relevant. Um, yeah, I'm sure, yeah. It doesn't come up too often. Once again, I think people have mostly been overly supportive with it, to the point that they kind of draw their own conclusions about what I am. Um, but yeah, I mean, I want to express it, definitely. And I need to express it. I do get very depressed if I don't. So there, I have to have an outlet. Uh, and I'm fortunate enough to you know, have a very loving girlfriend who, you know, it was, a big, it was a big selling point, I think, for her, to find out that I was uh, transgender. So, um, lucky me. <laughs> How is it for dating with you? Is it really difficult to find people who really understand everything and really get the fact that you have the band and you're one character in the band, but you're also transgendered and you also like girls? Is it really difficult? Yeah, it is. Um, it has been. I mean, once again, I'm still young, and a lot of the girls I've dated have been, you know, in my short existence have been pretty young, so, uh, you know, they didn't really understand it, uh, especially the ones that actually had to see me, like, not come to terms with it, they really didn't understand it, but then once it kind of became a thing that, hey, you got to be okay with this, otherwise, you know, get out, <laughs> uh, but I, surprisingly, I found a lot of individuals who do enjoy it, and that is a, that is a, a top thing, like, you know, um, and mostly it's people that, you know, they like they like both parts of it, and I think you have to. I think I've dated some people who wanted to force me one way or the other. Definitely in the beginning, I, there was a lot of there was there were some girls I've dated stupidly that wanted to force me to become a man, and you know, like said, that's a stupid that's a stupid thing. I'm I'm never going to call you a woman. Like you're a man. You were born a man. And you know, when you're dating someone like that, you believe them. Like this is this is stupid, isn't it? So, but over the years, I got a little smarter and. You know, uh, I definitely, I definitely inform people. You know that hey, if you want to start a relationship with me, let me just tell you the the list of things. I am, I have a lot of up upkeep. So, so kudos for my girlfriend for for fitting the bill because she's she's one in a million. Uh, I, I get, but I guess there. That's the thing. Like there is a lot of people who, like and women in particular, who like the whole cross dressing thing. Uh, but it doesn't mean that 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 they're one in a million. I should clarify, <laughs> because uh, I guess we're in progressive times now. They can still be just terrible people, and they can still like it. I'm just gonna throw that out there. <laughs> 
kind of on the topic of um, you can't girlfriend page. What is it about that relationship that you think makes it so successful? Because well, clearly, from what we see of the two of you, you have a very lovely relationship. So, what what is it that kind of makes you work? Well, we're it helps that we're just both super attracted to each other. Like that is a good thing. So, and that's really all it's based on. And that we can stand each other too. There's the the test of a relationship is definitely can you stand that person when nothing is going on? And there are moments when nothing is happening. It's the most boring, unromantic things that you could imagine. And if you still enjoy that person's company, it's probably a good bet. If the magic starts wearing off, that's probably when you should try to find someone else. You know, dating, dating turning into a relationship. Maybe you should just keep it dating. But uh, you know, the page is definitely someone I could see myself with in the long run. You know, I obviously can't predict the future, but you know, it's important. Uh, I like that. This has nothing to do with with gender whatsoever. I do with gender. Most of my responses are like it's definitely skirting the issue. Like, it's not, <laughs> oh, it's not even a big deal. Let's talk about the, but. But seriously, it doesn't. You know, any good relationship, you've got to be able to stand the person. You know, it can't just be based on attractiveness. Otherwise, you know, you're, yeah, you're going to have a lot of issues. Uh, uh, for me and her, you know, we find each other really attractive. She's got the cross-dressing thing. You know, it's, you know, she loves it. She's bisexual, and and you know, everything else is is just you know standard stuff that you kind of need to make it work. We have similar enough interests. We're different enough to keep it interesting. And I don't know, I'm very happy right now. And it's not a relationship that I ever anticipated or necessarily wanted. Does that make sense? Like, it's it was just a happy surprise. I, I couldn't know who would be the right person for me. Is there is there anything that you feel needs to be explained more to the general public? Is there anything that you feel people are particularly ignorant about and it would really help things along if um, there was some more understanding? Yeah, I definitely. I, th I think I'm not alone in this. And that really tired of people thinking that you have to be gay to. A lot of people, even after just watching Honeybee, you know, just think, I'm, think I'm gay, and it's like, really? I'm just, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a robot. Like, where do you get that from? <laughs> but you don't have to be gay necessarily uh, to to be transgendered. You can, you can, you can like. You can you can be a tomboy and want to be a man, and you can still like men, and vice versa. You know, it's just it's like people are not you can't put them in the cast. Uh, you can't you can't just mold that. They're not we're not molds. You know, we have to. It's it's just there's just people want to categorize and stuff, but really everyone's a unique snowflake. As stupid as that sounds, it sounds really stupid now that it left my lips, but. <laughs> We're all snowflakes, and uh, really, you just got to be who you are. And I really, I really wish people would stop saying that that I need to transition and stuff. Like that's the only way I'm going to find happiness, or that I need to stop kicking myself and not transition because it's like no. The what what society really needs is the gray area to just be okay. And I think when that happens, you know, we'll we'll all be a lot better off. I think it's already starting to happen, but you know, hopefully. Hopefully society kind of matures, and we it doesn't really matter because more and more, uh, you know, because I'm I am I'm kind of immune to the to seeing a man and dragon being shocked anymore, you know, because I, I see that all the time on a mirror. <laughs> uh, you know, I I I and a lot of our fans are are transgendered for some reason, and it doesn't even occur to me anymore. So it's like. You know, initially, initially when I when the when world was new and alien to me, it kind of did set me back. Like this is kind of weird. I can't put my fa my. But the more you kind of get involved in it, and the more you go, you kind of live in that world. It just becomes second nature. So it's like I do believe even the most you know uh, queer hating <laughs> what what redneck in the world could probably co come around in, in a few years, maybe. Maybe. Let's hope. Let's hope. I heard an interesting theory about that, actually. Um, I heard one person thought um, that actually all the homophobia and all the prejudice against LGBTQ people was actually at the core to do with sexism. That they thought um, it was just how they were trying to define um, the roles of the two genders into society. So, um, 
What do you, what do you think about that? Well, uh, the band uh, in Sneak Power Giraffe is full of feminists. Like, um, I think there's a blog that that is that is dedicated to to uh, saying that we're not, which is weird because it's one of our primary. We really feel that that you know the glass ceiling keeps needs to keep being broken. That women have a pretty hard time just existing in society. So. Um, yeah, I, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. I would agree. Uh, it's it sucks, and I think we're all guilty of it. We grow up in the society, and and you know we we have these things that must be, you know, and it's just it's just none of it's really true. None of it you can't you can't really say that a woman is this or a man is that, or you know, women can be masculine, men can be feminine, and it doesn't make them any less of a man or any less of a woman. So thanks guys for watching. Don't forget to check out the band Steam Power Giraffe. The link will be down in the description box. Thank you so much, Bunny, for joining me today. Thank you. <laughs> Alright, take care guys.